Okay, so beginning making this video, trying to explain what I believe, I, I hit a problem immediately, realizing that I can only say what I currently believe, because I'm always open to changing my mind. A large reason for feeling like this is because of reading um, the works of a philosopher called Socrates, and he's full of loads of gold. For instance, this one, uh, life is full of questions and idiots are full of answers. He basically had, uh, he had the idea that you can't teach anybody anything, you can only try to encourage them to think or work stuff out for themselves. And that's the path to true understanding and knowledge. My favourite piece of Socrates' thinking is the um, only true wisdom is to know that you know nothing. This is essentially a statement about scepticism. Um, he's sceptical of his own understanding and knowledge. He thinks that he, he's not completely grasped what's going on in the world and the universe. And he's sceptical of other people as well. And by uh, continuing to ask for reasons and explanations and evidence for for or things he's uh he thinks he'll gain greater wisdom and i completely agree with him on this another skeptic was René descartes who was a scientist and mathematician but also a philosopher and um again you can see here from this quote if you would be a seeker after truth it is necessary at least once in your life to doubt as far as possible all things he came up with um, an interesting thought experiment called descartes demon the idea of Descartes' demon is that um, some kind of demon is controlling absolutely everything. So, I mean, maybe a more modern contemporary example would be the, the movie The Matrix. So in the movie The Matrix, uh, your main character is living in um, a false world that is being controlled by these computer geniuses that are able to basically trick all your senses and um, they can make you believe anything. They could make you believe that you were living on Mars that could make you believe that your body was in fact the body of a fish. You were a fish um, and you were swimming around in the ocean. Um, and Descartes essentially said that if you were living in that world, then you couldn't trust um, the input from your senses because your senses are being manipulated by this demon or in the case of the Matrix by the, the program. So I'd say absolutely fundamentally, I can't really know anything. Um, my, my, my one first belief is that uh, the knowledge about the world outside myself that I have got is likely to be flawed. Um, and from that initial position, you can start building to higher level beliefs about the world um, that are reasonable to hold, um, but may still be flawed. Okay, so really this idea should be horrifying. What if I'm living in a false reality? What if there is some evil demon controlling everything I hear, see and do? Now I actually do quite literally believe that you can't know if that's the case. But um, even if it was the case that we did live in um, some kind of false reality like uh, represented in the Matrix, um, I don't think it would bother me that much. So in the movie, Neo is given the choice. He can either swallow the blue pill and his story ends and he wakes up in bed and he continues living in the, um, the false reality or he can swallow the red pill Morpheus is offering him and um, then he can find out what the true reality is. Now, if you imagine that Neo did swallow um, the blue pill and wake up in bed and continue his life as a computer programmer and going uh, through the motions in this false reality, uh, let's imagine he falls in love and meets a girl uh, and has children, etc. Would that make his life any less meaningful? Would his experiences in life be false experiences? He'd still have memories. He'd still have um, have lived his life. Um, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, Neo had a cool adventure when he swallowed the red pill. But he'd have probably had a cool adventure if he'd swallowed the blue pill. Um, so this doesn't really concern me that, that reality is false in, in uh, quotation marks. The things that give meaning to your life and the things that make life worth living are essentially events that happen inside your brain. Um, so yes, then the idea that the uh, reality is, is false in some way um, doesn't affect your subjective experience of reality. Okay. So then the question becomes, how do I add... Um, number two to my list of things I can believe if my first one is uh, I know that all knowledge I gain is likely to be flawed or, or incomplete um, well here I would make an appeal to aesthetic sense really um, for me um, what appeals to my 
aesthetic taste is uh, good things in life. Children, or having children, having uh, nice food, having happy friends, having nice relationships with people. Um, so essentially then um, I need to make a map of the world in my brain. I, th I assume that's where it's going to be stored anyway. Um, and with this map of the world, um, this will help me uh, navigate my way through life's problems and situations and hopefully enable me to maximize the things I consider good in life. So another way of saying maps is to think of it as models. This guy's got a model of um, reality uh, in the sense that he's got the computer game and the, the model steering wheel and, and seat, etc. And he can play around with that computer game and he can practice like uh, uh, how fast can you take this corner and try going a bit faster or a bit slower and, and experiment and see what happens without actually um, screwing up in, in real life. So um, when I'm saying map, I'm really meaning model of the world. So once we accept <coughs> that building models of the world is a good idea because it allows you to make predictions and uh, maximize your chances of uh, getting the good things in life, um, then it sort of makes sense to take as an article of faith, and this is genuinely faith, you, don't, you can't get evidence for this, um, but uh, that reality is real and it can be understood and that the rules that govern the reality of the universe can actually be worked out. Okay, so this is a famous experiment that Galileo did to show that um, objects, regardless of their mass, will accelerate at the same rate when dropped in, in the Earth's gravitational field. Um, <clears throat> the point of showing this is that uh, up until uh, Galileo showed this and did this experiment, um, people believed that heavy objects would fall faster than light objects, and no one bothered to do the experiment. So the point I'm making here is, is that if you have a model of how you think things work, you should test that model against reality. This has proven to be the most reliable way of discovering if your model is any good. If you watch a baby in its first year of life, essentially this is what they're doing. They, they're looking around themselves and they, they pick up objects and they bang them together and then they sort of stare at them for long periods of time and then they try doing it, it, it again. And, and what's going through their head? is essentially they're making hypotheses, they're testing them, and um, then if their hypothesis is not matching up with reality, they're altering their hypothesis until whatever they're thinking might happen in the world starts matching what does happen when they do the experiment. And essentially you can think of all learning as um, a process similar to this, whereby you go and uh, uh, try and find out whether your idea is correct. So what are the consequences of believing these three things? Um, I think the consequences are that you seek logical explanations for things. Um, you are not dogmatic. If you have um, a strongly held belief, you're willing to change it um, with uh, when new evidence comes to light. Um, or someone can show you that um, the method that you're using or the belief that you have um, is counterproductive and not allowing you to achieve the things that you think are good in life. Okay, so does this uh, mean I believe in God? No, it doesn't, because um, essentially it doesn't fit into any of those models and it's not the belief in God is not really required. Um, does it mean that I have no morality? Oh, the humanity, as this very funny picture may, uh, states. Uh, no, it doesn't mean I don't have any morals. Uh, my morality comes from essentially the fact that if you test your models against reality, you'll get, you know, you can find out that certain things just don't work. Can you make people be your friend and like and admire you by force? You simply physically cannot. You can get someone to pretend to like you, but it's not the same as actually liking you and having your interests in their heart. So um, I think that. Um, you know, morality and things like that, they're things that um, are innate in human beings. You know, a human being eating another human being, we don't consider moral, okay? Maybe some tribes do that kind of thing. Um, but um, a tiger killing uh, another tiger, we think of as natural behavior. I think natural behavior for human beings is to be kind and to be treat each other um, with dignity and respect. 
um, that's part of human nature. And um, evolution has uh, installed that in us, if you like. Um, so uh, that's what I believe. I believe those three statements, and from those three statements, I think you can pretty much get everywhere.